Welcome to this video series about the IETF Auditor Guide, the second competency, auditing uh, customer specific requirements, incorporating the automotive core tools. We're going to start the series today by a discussion about customer specific requirements. And I'm really pleased to welcome back Devon and Dawn to facilitate the discussion. So good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. So, uh, Devon, customer specific requirements. Maybe tell us a little bit about what are they? Yeah, so customer specific requirements are re requirements on top of what is already published in the IATF 16949 standard that the automotive supplier customer requires. Right, okay, and Dawn then, so I've heard the terms customer requirement and customer specific requirement. What is the difference? So with customer requirements, we're looking at all of the requirements that a customer might have on the particular supplier. When we're talking uh, customer specific requirements, these relate very much to the quality management system. And as Devon said right. before, that they, they, may be, um, they may be published by an OEM or another customer. Right, okay. So I guess the CSRs could apply to any contract that the organisation has with that customer, whereas the customer requirements may be more specific, I guess, to a particular product. Yes, yeah. Customer specific requirements tend to um, be in addition to a requirement of the standard uh, of the IATF standard. So right, okay. certainly yeah. the OEMs would set them out in that manner so that they're following the same clauses. Right. OK. No, I think that's clear. So from an auditor point of view, Devon, whether it be an internal auditor, second party auditor or third party auditor, what knowledge really should an auditor have then of CSRs? Well, one of the main things the auditor is going to need to know is who is the customers to that supplier. Right, yeah. Additionally, once you have that, you, you're going to want to know how those customer specific requirements are laid out throughout their entire process and which process you can audit them at. Right, okay, so what we're saying is they shouldn't be audited as a standalone they should be audited within the relevant processes Correct. within the organization. And again, I think that's a key learning point. I think often they are audited as a standalone. And I think we're saying jointly that that is not the right way to go about the audit. Right. Yeah. Dawn, can auditors access CSRs? Uh, the uh, IATF OEM ones are very easy to access because you can do that through the IATF Global Oversight um, right. website. Uh, the others may be a little bit more tricky. So we would probably say that it would be the, um, the, the, the people that you're auditing should be supplying those to you as part right. of any pre-planning information. But you wouldn't expect an auditor to have in-depth knowledge of every customer specific requirement out there because that would take a long time to learn yeah, all of yeah. those. So, and and yeah. if they printed all of them, they'd probably yeah. need a bigger car. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that the key point there is then that the auditor is auditing the organization process for identifying and implementing those customer specific requirements. Absolutely. Yeah. Devon, any more advice then on how they should be audited? For example, does the auditor have to check every single CSR doing each audit? So no, they need to be prioritized. And obviously IATF OEM customer specific requirements take priority. And then from there, you still have to sample all others. Right, okay. So it can be done almost a bit like, I guess, auditing calibration, where you don't check every gauge. It's similar with customer specifics that we're checking the process. Correct. Good. Okay, so thank you for that. Let's summarize then. So the key points are that customer specific requirements are additional quality management system requirements that can be set by an OEM but also any organization in the supply chain 
can write customer specific requirements that will be applicable for their suppliers. These need to be audited in any IETF audit, not as a standalone, but incorporated within the organization uh, processes and audited within those processes, I think is a, is a key point that we need to bring across. And also that we don't, as auditors, have to check every single customer specific requirement. They have to be sampled within the relevant process. We will be exploring this further when we talk about automotive core tools, which often are mandated uh, and specific reference manuals are mandated through customer specific requirements.